Hello, welcome to our morning lessons of science. We are continuing with our lesson. And uh, in the previous lessons, we have been looking at the rock formation. And we looked at various types of rock. Uh, just to remind ourselves, we looked at the three types of rock and how they are formed throughout the various processes. That is, we looked at the igneous rock. We also were able to look at um, sedimentary rocks and uh, perhaps metamorphic rocks. And uh, in our today lesson, we are going to look at the rock cycle. Uh, the rock cycle, that is what we'll be looking at. Uh, just to have uh, our understanding, after having known that how the processes of rocks are formed, we we'll have learned that the rocks are constantly being broken down in the process of weathering. And this process may bring a reformation or transformation of rocks. The types of rocks we are talking about is the igneous rock, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. This fundamental pathway through which the rock is cycled is what we refer to is as the rock cycle. Indeed, it is a group of changes. Uh, once this cycle is a model that describes the changes that occur on various types of rock on the earth crust. And as a result, we can also say that the rock cycle is an interrelationship among the rock types is the interrelationship among the rock types. We can also refer to these as the rock cycle. Just to remind ourselves, um, uh, we also learned about the structure of the earth. And that is the area where most of the rocks are found. The core, the mantle, and the crust of the earth can be envisioned as a giant recycling uh, machine that carry out various changes among the rocks. And this uh, giant machine, we have to consider it in form of a cycle. This will lead us to understand more about the rocks and their cycle. Although some rocks are distributed um, in a very vast space, they have some elements that make up rocks. And these elements, they are never created. They are also never destroyed. You remember we looked also at the minerals. Although they can be redistributed, uh, they can be redistributed in various regions of the earth crust, and that they can only be transformed. Therefore, transforming one rock or one type of a rock to another is what uh, we are going to share. Therefore, as we had looked at the, the recycling machine works in a manner that we'll have to look like. Remember of anything like a circle. Um, a tire wheel of can be a motorbike or a vehicle is always looked at in a circular manner. If you mark one point in that cycle, just this is like a cycle, If you mark one point and you try to observe, maybe you want to take, uh, oh, maybe the circumference of this part, you must begin from point A, you go through point B, and then you come to point C, and then eventually back to point A. 
in this manner as we are able to look at this is a cycle and therefore the rock cycle tend to look in this manner let us envision the bigger process over which the rock cycle is found i will use the diagram here so that we'll be able to understand them better we'll have the uh, the first um, portion as the sediments We have uh, igneous rocks. And then we'll have magma. And then after we after the sediment, we have sedimentary rocks. And then from sedimentary we can have uh, metamorphic Now, this will appear uh, in the various rock cycle or the changes that will begin. Uh, let us look on the recycling machine. We have to envision it as the earth. And um, from the molten state of the rock, that is where there is magma. The materials will always solidify below the earth surface and then the earth surface those material like magma if they are exposed on earth surface they become lava remember depending on the two forms that is intrusive and extrusive there will be uh, because of the process of uplifting solidification cooling it will result the magma to re recrystallize the magma will recrystallize this is magma is now going is undergoing the process of recrystallization that is cooling and recrystallization in the process of cooling and recrystallization they are recrystallized magma recrystallize and also cool to lead to the formation of the igneous rocks and then the igneous rocks will have to undergo a particular process when igneous rocks on the earth's surface are taken up by various processes such as um weathering and erosion we looked at it transportation it will lead into the fragments or the weathered material of the igneous rocks will be transported in in form of sediments therefore there is a process that will lead to it and when we look here this one is weathering weathering will work will work Weathering uh, will have a weathering, transportation, and deposit.
and also deposition later. The materials, the weathered materials, will be deposited in form of sediments. And as the sediments will undergo the process of cementation and compaction, they will lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks will be formed. Just to preview, from the previous lesson, we looked at how sedimentary rocks are formed. Sedimentary ro uh, rocks are formed in the process of cementation because they are laid down in strata and compaction. They are also compacted, cementation and compaction. The process of cementation and compaction will lead to the formation of uh, sedimentary rocks. Now, sed sedimentary rocks are always laid down in strata. They are laid down in layers. And over a period of time, you have been able to see that when sediments have been cemented and compacted together, they will lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks. Now, what will happen to these sedimentary rocks over a period of time? Those sediments which are laid down in sediments, in layers, we call them strata. Upon subjection to great heat and pressure, they will result in the new structure of rocks that are known as metamorphic rocks. What process will they have undergone? What process will they have undergone? This process here, uh, they have been subjected to great heat and pressure. Therefore, it is the heat and pressure that is going to produce new types of rock that are called metamorphic rocks. And below, below the process, there are variations in temperature and pressure. This causes the physical and chemical change of the metamorphic rocks, and that one will result into new built-up structures of metam metamorphic rocks. And some of these metamorphic rocks, upon subjection to some heat and pressure, they may, some of the minerals in them may melt down. And as they melt down, they lead to the formation of a fluid material that is known as magma. Therefore, partly some of the minerals content that are found in metamorphic rocks because of the variation of the heat and pressure as a result of the temperature. Some minerals in metamorphic rocks may partly melt and as they melt down they form a fluid materials of the rock elements that we refer to is that magma. Therefore, as we already have seen, we started with magma. Magma is going to be cooled and recrystallized, leading to the formation of igneous rocks. Now, look at how it is very interesting. When you study at these charts, there are also various processes that we also have to mention. At a given time, the metamorphic rocks may also be exposed on earth surface. It is quite indeed. They may be exposed on earth surface. And have, they are being exposed on earth surface. Remember, the agents that are on earth surface will lead to weathering such as ice, water, and even the temperature itself. The climatic condition of factors will lead 
to metamorphic rock being weathered down. And as it is weathered down, what will happen in the process? In the process, uh, we'll have to be able to understand. It may also lead to the formation of the sediments before they melt down. Now here, they are on earth's surface. And sometimes also the sedimentary rocks, uh, they may be exposed on earth's surface. Remember, weathering, weathering may work on both rocks, both igneous rocks, metamorphic rock, and sedimentary rocks. Therefore, they may also undergo, they may also result into the formation of sediments because of the weathering. These are the processes of weathering. Can either be mechanical weathering, physical weathering, that will lead into the transportation. It will lead into the transportation. And then the transportation will lead into deposition. The deposition of the withered materials as a result of weathering will be transported and then deposited in form of sediments. And when these sediments undergo periodic cementation and compaction, eventually will lead to the formation of um, metamorphic rocks or sedimentary rocks, I mean. They will lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks and thereafter, sedimentary rocks will be subjected to great heat and pressure and then they will result into the formation of metamorphic rocks. Now, this is our rock cycle as we are able to look at it. This is our rock cycle and then that it may result into the formation of various elements and we have learned that there are processes that are involved here. Remember also erosion may work. Weathering, we, we discussed about weathering and erosion in the, previous, in the previous parts. Therefore, this is going to lead to what we call the rock cycle. Now, after looking at the rock cycle in itself, we are able to understand various forms of rocks, such as igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and then metamorphic rocks. But inside this rock, it is the rock that bears the mineral elements. We refer to them as ores. We refer to these mineral elements as ores. Therefore, we'll be able to look at the ores, and lastly, we we'll look at the various processes over which this ore can be extracted and as we move on. It is still part of the rock cycle. Let us look at the ores. Naturally, most of our um, non-biological resources that are found on Earth's surface or they are obtained either from the ground, uh, most of them may contain um, the mineral elements, which are very important and significant, especially the metals. Therefore, an ore is a type of a rock that contains sufficient mineral with important elements especially metals, which can be extracted economically and then for the various purposes. Remember, an, an ore like bauxite uh, has various metal elements in it. We'll be looking at those various elements. And then, because a metal is a resource, we can extract it for economical purpose. And uh, we are various. On that part, we covered some various uses of rocks in the previous lesson. Therefore, the concentration of an ore, as well 
as where and how it occurs will directly affect the cost associated with mining. Therefore, in the ore, we will have to extract them in the process of mining. We extract the ores from the, from the earth's surface, that is from uh, beneath the earth crust, in the process of mining, we'll be able to look at it. Therefore, uh, the cost will be associated in mining of the ore can either make it very much expensive or more profitable enough depending on the amount of the ore deposit that is found in a particular area. Therefore, metal ores are generally uh, made up of oxides. The metal ores, uh, the metal ores are generally um, found in form of the oxide. We'll have uh, them as oxides. Some can be found in form of um, sulfides. Yes. Uh, Others will be found in silicates. And perhaps uh, we'll have platinum and gold. Platinum and gold. These are the various ores or oxides that can be, uh, that can be extracted upon the process of separation and then we'll obtain metals which are also sometimes have some minerals that are very much important in our lives especially as we live on earth's surface therefore for the all for us to be able to understand it the all must be processed extracted and then the metal of interest is separated from the waste rock material or the waste of that ore, then we'll be able to get out the mineral that are found important. Let us look at the sum of the metal ores. We are going to look at some few um, metals and I uh, will look at uh, how we can extract them. There are various metal ores and some of the elements or the mineral element that are useful in them will also be able to find them with their chemical formula in this tabular format.
Therefore, we'll be able to have uh, the metal O here. We will have the O. Then we have its chemical form. And then we'll be able to look at the metal, extracted metal, that can easily be extracted from it. Therefore, we have seen as one of the metal ore or just an ore of bauxite. As you know, the chemical formula of oxide is this. And then what kind of metal that is extracted from? An oh, uh, 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 a bauxite oh this is aluminium we have aluminium aluminium is a metal that is extracted from it and then we have a uh, cassette right What is its chemical formula? This is the chemical formula of the cassette right. And when this ore is extracted, there is a mineral that is uh, referred to as tin or a metal will be extracted from it. Then we have uh, the chalcosite. The chalcosite as a formula, chemical formula of this. Perhaps now having the chemical formula or the chemical knowledge will be able to understand this is a form of copper. Therefore, copper metal will be extracted in it. And we have two types of uh, copper. We have the chalcosite and chalcopyrite. This is its formula. And then it's referred to is as the copper. It's a copper metal that is extracted in it. And then we have galena. Galena is also an ore having a chemical formula of this. And then eventually we will know it is the metal known as lead is the one that is extracted. And then we have hematite. We have a hematite having a formula, a chemical formula of this. What kind of uh, metal is going to be extracted in this form? You can guess.
And then we also have uh, limatite. It is ilmatite. And then we have a uh, sphalerite. And then we have um, this is pitch. Pitch blender. Pitch blender is also having a chemical formula. Um, Ilmarite has a, a chemical formula of um, this kind of component. This is its chemical formula. Then what does it mean? This one is an ion. And then this one is titanium. And some element of also iron is found in it. And then this one is um, having a chemical formula of this. And this is zinc. This is um, uranium. And many, many other ores that you will be able to look, that uh, are able to be looked at. When you look at your chemical chart, the chemical elements, you'll be able to find out this chemical formula representing this metal. Therefore, it is from this process of extracting an ore, undergoing what you call mining, and then therefore separation will happen so that we extract a metal of our desire. Such we can extract from bauxite, we can extract aluminum, uh, cassetrite, we can extract tin, chalcocyte, we can extract Copper, that is the first type of copper and shell. Copyright is a copper, a um, uh, second form of copper. And then galena is lead, hematite is iron, ilmarite is titanium and iron. Then sulfurite has an element of zinc, and then pitch blender has an element of uranium. Therefore, these ones are extracted in the process of mining. Shortly, we'll have to look at mining as we move on to be able to understand various ways. Let's look at mining. Then what is mining? I hope you are able to learn and we are able to understand that there are various processes that are uh, the mineral ore are extracted. Therefore, mining is the process of obtaining. Mining is the process of obtaining. Look at it, it is the process of obtaining. The process of obtaining. Can also call it as extraction. the process of extracting valuable minerals valuable minerals from the earth crust mining is simply the process of extracting valuable minerals from the earth crust and there are various ways of mining there are actually types of mining shortly we'll have to look at them
types of mining there are three types of mining basically one is what we call um, open cast mining we have a uh, open cast or open pit mining we have open cast mining we also have uh, underground mining and there are three types of mining here we have open cast mining we have underground mining and alluvial mining let's look shortly at the open cast mining how we can obtain or how we can extract these val valuable minerals from the earth crust we have open open cast mining in open cast mining this uh, is a method that involves the removal of the overburden materials and expose the mineral ore that is going to be extracted using either shovels we can use um, hammer drills and we can also sometimes dig them using the forklifts and uh, these minerals once uh, these or once it is extracted it is uplifted and taken in the process of separation and then we can separate it from other waste materials because it's an ore and then under the process of purification we will able to obtain a mineral or a type of a metal that we are able to obtain it and we have um, Understanding that the overlying material is the one that is the overlying material is the one that is removed. Is the one that is removed first, because uh, an earth, an earth crust is is made up of various layers. You never know where the mineral is embedded, but because this is just in an open place, this uh, you can just, uh, for example go upon a given place if this is the mineral ore and this represents the earth crust what you need to do to reach this ore you will have to extract this part this is what we call the overlying burden material the overlying material will must be removed first of all and after it being removed and therefore you will be able to go inside or dig using either hammer drills or even shovel and then you scoop out that mineral ore and then when the ore is removed from the earth crust it can be lifted up to the process where it can be uh, separated and purified so that we can obtain the kind of the mineral that we want for example there are various uh, uh, minerals that can be extracted using the open pits or open cast mining. We have some of the examples of the mineral. We have, um, we have uh, clay. We can also have coal. We also have copper. granite and also diamond gravel and sandstone gravel and sandstone these are examples of the minerals that can be extracted using the open pit or open cast mining and uh, we have clay we have coal we have copper we have granite 
uh, we have diamond, gravel, and sandstone. Remember, the kind of tools can be sho shovels. Shovels are the ones that are used. We have hammer drills. Hammer drills can also be found here. And then uh, the tools that can be used to scope uh, the material. First of all, you have to dig the material by either using a hammer drill or a shovel. And then eventually when you reach the, the ore, you extract it and then take it into the processing plant where it can be separated from other impurities and therefore you will have your mineral formed ready for use. We have another type of mining we referred to it as underground mining. underground mining now in the underground mining this involves various techniques where we can use for example an excavator to mine the deep mineral that are found deep beneath the earth crust it can go even to around two hundred kilometers deep therefore this type of mining involve will have to sink it involve the sinking of a vertical shaft the vertical shaft will be sunk and after that when you reach the mineral ore where it is and then we'll have to create underground tunnels. Those tunnels will lead us to see where the ore is found. And therefore, after that, we'll have now to extract the mineral ore or to extract the ore. From there, the ore is placed on conveyor belt on conveyor belt which is, is the conveyor that now convey this mineral ore onto the earth surface where it will have to be processed because we cannot process these minerals underground because of the limited supply of oxygen and sometime when we are underground uh, we have uh, some experts the the mineral uh, workers the mineralogists are also few of them are sent underground so that in the process of creating the tunnel around two or four who will be operating uh, the, 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 the 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 shaft and then somebody also will be working on the conveyor belt so that other two people will be scooping the mineral as they bring it near closer to the conveyor belt and then the mineral will be ferried or will be conveyed on at surface for further processing and separation and um, that one will give us just a simple diagram so that we are able to see the vertical shaft is sunk beneath the earth crust and after it has been sunk into the earth crust what happened the horizontal tunnel the horizontal tunnel are created this tunnel are, su are supported by props we call them the pit props. They are just metal bars so that they will not allow this wall to be far to, to, to fall down in the process. And perhaps this is where the ore is hidden. This is where 
this can be the O. Therefore, in the process, what will happen after we have created, uh, we have uh, sunk the vertical shaft underground, therefore this is just a tunnel. In the tunnel, there are men who can work on it uh, to go and scoop that mineral ore, and then a few of them will place it on a trolley There will be uh, a trolley, a movable machine. A movable machine, when it is now placed here, it is brought on the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt will be able to convey the mineral on earth surface and therefore it will be taken in the processing room or in the processing house where it can be processed this is just a house near on uh, that is now on earth surface but this is the crust the earth crust it can go deep as even to a distance of around 200 kilometers and then this is the vertical shaft embedded with the belt with called uh, with what we call the conveyor belt and then in the process you will find that the mineral is scooped, placed on the trolley, moved closer to the conveyor belt, and then it is the conveyor that carries the mineral on at surface, where it will also be scooped here and then taken to the house, to the processing house, where we'll have to separate that mineral from other impurities and prepare it for ready production. And such minerals that can be found in this, um, in this, we have a mineral like oil. We can also have um, gold. We have uh, uranium. Examples of those minerals. And uh, also we have um, tin and even zinc. These are examples of minerals that can be mined using the underground method. You simply sink a vertical shaft into the earth crust and then you create the underground tunnels. And then you extract the ore by some few workers. You bring it, you move it in the trolley and then take it to the conveyor belt and then the conveyor will carry it on the house where it will be processed and separated. That will make us to be able to see. That is how the underground method works. Let's move on and look at alluvial, alluvial mining. Alluvial mining. Let's look at alluvial mining. This is also a method that is used for mining. There are various methods that can be, uh, that can, various um, minerals that can be extracted in various places on earth surface. But now alluvial mining involves, uh, is a method of extraction that involves dredging. This one involves dredging. We use a dredger. We use a machine that is called dredger. This dredger is a floating machine that can float either on water surface. Now, as uh, it floats on water surface, it goes where there is some minerals that have been deposited um, 
that is now on water surface along the waterbed. That is the sea floor. It can be on the sea floor. So that to reach the alluvial uh, alluvial deposit mineral, where the minerals are deposited, such as um, rock salt, can also have uh, soda ash, and so forth. These are the minerals that can be extracted by dredger. Just a dredging machine is allowed to float on water. It's, as it floats on water, it goes where, on the seafloor where there's some alluvial deposits of the mineral elements such as the rock salt or the soda ash. And then shovels Shovels are, 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 are sunk now again underground, uh, that is under the water I mean. The shovels are sunk under the water and then by hydraulic function the mineral is scooped into the shovels by uh, hydraulic processes of pressure. It is first of all blasted, the mineral is blasted for example, the rock salt, and then it is crushed. In the process, it is allowed to dissolve in a, in a liquid form, in a solution. Therefore, this solution is now the one that is carried to the dredger and stored in some container on the dredger. And then when the, dredge, when the containers on that dredger is full, we take the containers on just uh, along the the the, the, the seashore so to we offload these containers with those solution of the mineral and therefore it is taken first of all it's also purified and then using various processes this is how alluvial mineral is or alluvial mining is done and most of the minerals i've already given example the rock salt and the soda ash can be used this uh, along this area. Let's look at the process or the resultant, the resultant effect, because we are dealing with the rocks and environment. We will finally look at the issues that are looked upon on the environment. We call them the environmental issues. will have environmental issues that emanate and then we'll be able to look at the recycling. From the mining process, the process of extracting valuable minerals on earth surface, we have various environmental effects that will emanate from it. For example, on our environment as human being, there are non-living resources that we are always depending on, which are not renewable. These resources are non-renewable resources. The non-renewable resources on which we depend on uh, they are not always available. They are not always available. But now as human beings, where we live on the environment, we have an escalating or increasing population on earth surface in various continents. This population will always pose an increasing demand will always pose what we call an increasing demand on these resources that are non-renewable. What do we need to do so that 
The increasing demand is balanced with these resources, which are non-renewable. We need to keep some of these materials to live or to, to last longer in the best way that we are able to understand. And the, this one will always to make us be able to look on recycling. Actually, recycling is the best way to make this material last longer so that we will not be spending extra um, expenses on the resources that we know they are non-renewable. And non-renewable resources are always expensive. They always increase. Therefore, recycling is simply to convert the waste material uh, into, uh, we are converting them into, uh, into raw material that can be used into raw materials. We are converting, not raw materials, we convert them into useful material. We convert the waste products or the waste resources into useful material. Now, when we do this, we have convert, converted waste material so that they can be reused again. We are providing a longer period on these renewable resources. And that one will help us to look into it. Then, why is it recycling very important on Earth's surface? The importance of recycling is that, on environmental issue, why do we recycle the material? One is that, Recycling reduces. Recycling reduces the waste in the land. The waste material, can call, we can call them garbage, in the landfill. Remember, after mining, there are some wastes, especially the over, uh, the overburden material. The overburden material that are removed. Mm? They are removed from a particular surface of the earth, and then they are positioned on another part. And the place where they have been removed, there is a land that is called a pit. A pit will be just left there. And during, for example, the rain season, that pit can be filled with water and can pose a hazardous danger on human beings. For example, it will be a, a breeding site for mosquitoes. Therefore, human beings will suffer on the environment as a result of malaria. Number two, children will also be vulnerable to accidents in that pit. If it is filled with water, uh, you see children are always looking for place, a vast place to play. They can confuse. That can be a playing ground only to realize some of them have succumbed to the accident and therefore they may also lose their life. Another important is that um, recycling reduces the expense. reduces the expense. Recycling reduces the expense in form of the energy, the energy used. To do what? To convert the energy that is used to convert the waste material. compared to the energy 
that is used to create new raw materials. For example, uh, we have learned about the aluminium element. It is found from bauxite. Bauxite after being extracted. Now remember the technological principles applies here. The capital, the technology that is involved in the process of obtaining aluminium as a raw material. It will have cost lump sum money. But when you take an already material of the aluminium, it only takes around 5% of the energy to convert it into useful material and that one you'll be able to learn that the energy five percent compared maybe to the energy that was required you will have saved 95 percent of energy in the process of converting just aluminium taking five percent of energy you'll have saved 75% energy that could be used in the process of extracting aluminium and also processing it so that you are going to get the material that will be required to use. These are some few importance of why recycling it is very important. Now, to that part, we are able to come to an end of this lesson of the rock cycle, the oz and environmental issue maybe we'll proceed in the next lesson for the other lesson have a good day thank you <laughs>